Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Thursday night, paint night. I'm your host, Adam Paul. I got my wife over here. See? Say hi. Hi, guys. All right. Oh, let me turn this volume down real quick. All right. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to go ahead and throw those in into the comments. Um, if you want to be entered for a chance to win, um, we're going to give away uh, this thing that I'm painting tonight. I'm not sure if I'm going to paint the back. I know I'm going to paint the front. I will paint the back uh, once it gets uh, given away. We'll see what kind of time we have. Um, but yeah, we have this flaked with the lime line uh, crushed glass flake. You can see it's it's much more chunky than uh, what regular metal flake would look like. And once this is glossed up, I mean it really it really shines. So we got both sides on these. Um, maybe I'll do the back side. We'll see. But whoever wins this, it will be painted on both sides. But the plan is that we get this scuffed down, which is mostly all the way scuffed down already. You can see there's a couple of shiny spots there. You know, there. I got pretty heavy on the clear right there. You see how it kind of build up right there? Even right there, it kind of almost like ran off. I have a couple of questions coming in already. Oh, oh sure. Go ahead. Someone says, what air compressor do you use? Um, I use a, a uh, two-stage pump on my air compressor. And I can't, I can't remember. I think the gallons is an 80-gallon tank. But the important thing is to have the two-stage pump. Because some pumps only have, like, the one cylinder that goes up. You need the one like a, like a Harley that has a V. So that way you got – it's a double pumper. You're pumping twice the amount of air into the tank, refilling it. Because that's the problem. It's not really the size of the tank. It's the size of the pump is, is what you want to pay attention to. The tank does matter as well. If it's too small of a tank, it's just not going to keep up. But, um, but yeah, two-stage, two-stage pump. Um, another one. Someone asked, can I apply U-Pull 2882 clear over a lacquer base coat? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, usually people would not do that, uh, but doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to get away with it. If you're going to do it, make sure that you spray really light coats at first so there's no reaction. Now, maybe somebody else can chime in and maybe knows a little better about that, but I'm not quite old enough to know about lack of paints, you know. Those were those are long gone before I even started painting. You still do see them around, but I don't think anybody really uses them anymore. All right, got that cleaned up. Oh, yeah, guys, tonight is another water night. <laughs> oh, no. Well, it looks like we had a super chat come in. Who got there? Will you skip ahead? I wasn't there yet. How long do you leave on the tape? Um, I, I just leave it on. You don't want to leave it on more than, like, a couple of days, especially masking tape because that can leave a residue if it's left, like, a couple of weeks or so. Most tape can only be stuck down and left for a while. Kind of depends on the performance of the tape. Are these going to be for sale sometime? Yep. These these will be for sale. They're raw metal, uh, metal aluminum, and they'll be coming in a three-pack. So, yeah, you will be able to buy those. Okay, so there's my center line. The super chat was from Larry. says, thank you, Adam and Ash. Hope you guys are doing well. Right, we Larry. Appreciate you're doing that. well, Larry. Glad to see you on again. He's back. Okay. You know what? I'm going to change my mind on that. I'm going to pull that because I really just probably want to edge around this first. What setup do you use to make sure you don't get moisture in your air for paint? Well, we do live in Utah, so it's a pretty dry state. We don't have a whole lot of problems. Um, but there is... Uh, you're going to want some kind of a filter trap on your compressor. And then definitely... You're going to want, here's a couple of different versions. You're going to want something like this to hook onto the bottom of your paint gun, or you're going to want a uh, disposable ball filter like that. Either way, this one does have a, 
a release valve. So reusable on that one. Okay. Nice. All right. All right. I don't think I need a center line for this because it's going to come down so close that I'll be able to eyeball it. Because usually I would put a center line right there. But you know what? I'll just match that up. Uh, let's put a center line. I want to be right. How long do you usually wait after you put down your black base coat before you flake? Um you really just a couple of minutes is all it takes. It all kind of depends on how heavy you spray it. If you're spraying it super heavy, then it's going to take longer for it to dry. But uh, generally like 10 minutes or so, five or 10 minutes. Also, when are the bigger hoods coming in? The uh, bigger hoods are here. They. I'm just waiting to get the rest of them. I can show you one actually right now. We're talking about it. Oh, you can't. I'm gonna have to move the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back, uh, it up. back it up. Here, we'll go show this thing. So yeah, this is aluminum too. Same thing that the um tree is made out of. Uh, so you can grind these, you can prime them, you can paint them. Um, they're slightly smaller than the last ones I had. I felt like the other ones were too too big and too heavy because they were made out of steel. These ones are made out of aluminum. Uh, price point on these are going to be, uh, 39 bucks was going to be the list price, but you're going to be able to pick these up for around 25 bucks, uh, when they first come out, the trees are going to be around 25 bucks for three of them. So yeah. Cool. See those yeah. next week. What causes, what causes candy to peel with paint? I made sure everything was properly sanded with 600 cleaned. Seemed like the blue candy peels the worst. Well, uh, a lot of times that would be due to oversaturation. Um, I see that happen quite a bit. It actually happens to myself every once in a while. Uh, but oversaturation of the candies could cause them to uh, adhere, have problems with adhering. So you might want to look at that. Um, yeah, just go slower. Also, you spray with the spray gun, go super slow. You know, you don't want to. You don't when want to you, burn up those paints. Okay. When you use lace, is it material, plastic, or cloth? Uh, you can use a vinyl material, but most people just use a cloth. Um, you could use a shower, not a shower curtain. Uh, what did I use? What did I have that I used? Uh, a curtain? Oh, yeah, a curtain or a tablecloth. You'll find a lot of cool designs in tablecloths that are like that knit style. Do you know when those the trees and the hoods are going to be available? I'm just waiting for them to show up here. Um, I'm getting them made local, so it should be by the weekend, I'm guessing. Um, it's going to be next week for sure. We'll start giving some. Once I get them, we'll start giving some of those away, too. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think we're pretty centered there with that point. Another question. Someone says, my panels were blushing. Humidity was 89. Air temp was 69. What temperature your panels need to be in order not to blush or what overall temperature needs to be in order to not have any issues? Well, you know, they always say like 70 degrees would be the optimal temperature um, for painting in. Obviously, anything over that, the paint's going to react different and it's going to dry different, especially when it comes to base coats and uh, problems with bottling and, and uh, uneven textures can happen. But 70 degrees would be optimal on that. Uh, back under. Josh said, so I want to use black candy over my silver flake for the tape lines. Can I candy over the silver flake before I clear or do I need to clear candy then clear again? Um. You don't need to clear in candy. 
Um, you're spraying the, what's he spraying the candy over again? Black. Uh, silver flake. Okay, silver flake. So the silver flake needs to be um, clear coated over the top and then sanded smooth. And at that point, as long as you put enough clear on it like this, then, and it's smooth enough, you're, you're good just to tape right on top of that. Sometimes if uh, you're, if you don't get as, as much clear on there as you would like, you could always scuff it down, clear it one more time, and then you have enough clear on there to make it smooth. Especially with the glass. <laughs> Excuse me. Whoa. Okay. Looks like this one's getting off a little bit. Let's, let's move this over. Oh, there's a problem. There we go. Uh, have you used the glow in the dark colors yet? Uh, yes, we do. We have um, we do have some spray outs done. I haven't really, I haven't really done much as far as projects go. Um, I've just tested them, made sure they worked, and that's about it. Uh, but we will be doing. I was going to do it tonight, but then these trees came in, and and uh, I figured this would be a good one. But yeah. Uh, Maybe next week we'll do something on the on the uh, glow in the dark. Still trying to figure out what to paint it on, but. But he said he was the winner, um, and he said he he won the one point four gun, and he said he he received his goodies and can't wait to try it out. Oh, Thanks right on. For yeah. How long in between coats of inner coat and metal flake at seventy degrees? Uh, inner coat and metal flake because. You know, usually, well, you can, you can mix flake with inner coat clear and spray it on. But remember, inner coat clear is like clear base coat. It's going to dry faster. It's going to put more of a texture onto your part, causing you to have to clear, to add more coats of clear coat in order to bury it. Um, so I recommend to mix your clear coat into your, mix your flake into your 2K clear coat, like I did here. It's, it's part A, part B. Mix that together, then mix your flake in there. Uh, the lime line, it's one pack equals uh, one pint. And one pint will do like most motorcycles. Uh, baggers probably need two to three. But yeah, use clear coat. It smooths out faster and it's much easier. Also, the fact of having the 2K, the chemical uh, hardening of the paint, uh, you're, you're just going to make your, your paint job better and uh, adhere better and less problems a lot of people i know that they i feel like they overuse inner coat clear or clear coat they'll just pile it on but remember you're just piling on a bunch of base coat that's uncatalyzed um, so when it comes to laying down tape or anything for that matter rock chips down the road it could cause more problems than what it's worth so um, i prefer actually to if i'm done with a certain stage i'll go ahead and put it through clear coat and then i'll scuff it back down again and do the next layer Someone said, you need to add some scented pigments into the clear for the trees. <laughs> uh, so, oh, yeah. That's, wish that was possible. Somebody asked you, ever add blow dots to your custom paint? Oh, I think I call them freak dots, but yeah. If we're talking about the same thing, I don't know. Yeah, freak dots. Yeah, I'd do them on here, but it would be way too difficult. This is a pretty small project. We've done them before on live, though, haven't we? Freak dots. Yeah. yeah. I think we did a long, long time ago. Can you clear with an airbrush? No. Uh, if you're doing model cars, maybe with, with a bigger size tip, but not really. You would, you would have to thin it down so much that I feel like the clear coat would be uh, compromised at that point. Miss Pit Ranch said, I flaked and cleared a mailbox Tuesday. After I was done, I noticed several very tiny bubbles in the clear. Is it solvent pop? Should I have waited longer between coats? That does happen. You know, um, sometimes when you go to sand, you have that solvent that's trapped underneath there. You do need to let that clear um, gas out enough to be able to uh, to be able to recoat that again, especially in the wintertime, because you have to remember, everything slows down, especially if your shop gets cold. I know here, everything uh, slows down quite a bit uh, when it comes to clearing, base coat, anything. It's so cold today. It is cold today. 
All right, you guys even see this? I'm gonna let me go ahead and get this a little closer. Huh? Uh, someone asked, on a small item like that, could you use epoxy over the flake rather than clear? You probably could. I wouldn't do it on any motorcycle parts, but um, on something like an air freshener like this, I feel like that would be an option that you could experiment with. Okay. See these colors we got here? So we got black. Um, am I going to line this out with black? That's my question. Yeah, I probably will. I'll line it out with the candy black. And then I do want to paint this thing candy green. So we could do this a couple of different ways. We can either mix the gold and the blue together to make the green. Or we can apply the blue and then apply the gold over top to make the green. So let's go ahead and do that. We really haven't. We've always, always talked, talked about how you, how you can take these two colors, colors mix, mix them, them together, together, and you can make green. Blue, blue yellow, yellow makes green. For instance, For instance, if we were to add the red, the red and the yellow is going to make the orange, and the red and blue is going to make a purple. Now, any time that these three colors either get mixed together or are overlapped on the part, it's going you're going to end up having a brown, which is sometimes not a bad thing if you're wanting to go with brown. But uh, if you don't want the brown, it's probably going to ruin whatever you're doing. So remember, if you're working with all three of these colors, they need to be kept separate. Um, and on something like this, it would be nearly impossible. You would have to. There's not much really going on here. So we will go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and paint this with a blue. And maybe I'll even hold off on the black. We'll just go blue. If I decide to go black, maybe I'll do some drop shadows later. But... Maybe we'll just start with the blue. Someone said, what would you recommend as a setup for airbrushing metal flake? Is a flake buster a necessity? Um, I would never use a flake buster. Once again, flake buster is meant to blow on dry clear or dry uh, flake onto wet clear coat. So you would start by uh, either doing black base coat and then you would clear it. And then while the clear is still wet, you would take that flake buster and you would just blow it on there. But the problem is with that is they lay at all kinds of different angles. You blow it on there, it's going to like, one's going to like tip up on the other. And it's going to cause um, a lot more work to be able to add enough clear coat to be able to knock that down. Also, if you're working with colored flake, red, blue, gold, any of these colored flakes, and you go to sand the clear and you, what will happen is you will knock off the color off of those flakes and you'll have a bunch of silver specks everywhere. So keep that in mind. That's pretty much why I don't use any colored flake. Um, I would rather personally just go with silver flake. And this is a combination of 0.08 and 0.04. Clear coat it and then just use transparent candy paint over the top to uh, basically dye the, uh, the surface. Someone said, uh, freak dots. My brother had a 70 Chevelle with freak dots and lace on the hood. It was beautiful. Really? That's cool. Yeah, you don't see that very often. Yeah, you don't. Someone asked, how cold is it here? It is freaking cold. The wind is brutal. Yeah, it's a... Uh... We're at a winter storm watch, but right now it says it's 26 degrees. Wow. But it doesn't feel like that. <laughs> feels a lot colder. Yeah, I think it's supposed to get down to single digits. Oh, they said the winds, because of the winds, it makes it feel like it's 16 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're supposed to get down to like two degrees in a couple of days. It's cold. Good thing we're not construction workers. Yeah. Okay, so blue candy. So this is mixed with, this is a candy concentrate. Here's the blue right here. Cam's kind of a mess. This is a concentrate form, so you need to mix this with clear base coat or inner coat clear. Instructions are right there on the back. The instructions are also there on how to mix uh, the purple, the green, and the orange. Also the candy brown. Tells you right here how to mix all that. Big, Big Jerry said, do you have to use a water slide Raider logo or can you use a regular Raider logo for helmet and clear coat it? 
Um, you would have to practice and try and see if that worked. Bikes and Barber said, I just watched your podcast with Tucker Speed, and now I keep thinking I'm watching a puppet show. Laugh out loud. A lot of inspiration to take from that podcast. I think people should check it out. All right, thanks. This spraying okay? Negative eight. Burr. That's too cold. Okay, I'll grow right there. Yay, Zane got his leaf kit finally. I am seriously so sorry that took me so long. I don't know why your email went into my spam, but I am now checking my spam emails. Oh, I felt so bad. Sorry. But I'm glad you got it. Burr, it's cold a lot of places. Negative 35 in Alberta. What? Oh, well. That's too cold. Jeez, it's unbearable. Yeah, that's cold. Snap Life Seven said, "I'm just learning about P grit sandpaper. Do you, do you use P grit or regular sandpaper? Still don't fo fully understand the difference." Ah, uh, you know what? I really don't either. Um, I do. We do. We do use P grit. Um, huh? Maybe I'll have to get back to you on that. I'll have to do a little more research. Or maybe somebody knows. When you're painting Harley fenders, do you clear coat the underside? Um, on the fenders? Harley fenders? Yeah. It kind of depends. If it's raw metal, you're starting with raw metal, then yes. They're going to get cleared underneath. Because they need that protection. If you're painting like stock Harley parts that have already been painted, which they all are usually then you would um you know, most most of the time i go with a black base and then yes but what what you do is you do need to paint the the ledge and then up a little bit underneath it um well it kind of depends on what you think but um most of the time i don't i'll paint i'll paint the edge and then like i said i'll paint like a few inches into the bottom of the fender i do paint underneath the tanks The country said printed out over a hundred Harley shield outlines about to spray metallic over them and then remove and candy over it all for a kind of ghost effect of the shields. Fingers crossed. All right. Good luck to you. Jordan says I've been searching flake guns and all this info to do different flake and colored flake, but the way you just explained it made it so much more simple. Oh yeah. Well, have you ever tried to spray one flake and then spray another flake right next to it? I mean, it's not, you literally have to, if you're, if you're flaking anything, you can't tape anything off besides like the fuel bungs and stuff like that. You're not going to do any graphics. Flake has to be like done beforehand like this, and then the graphics will be done after. Not to say the other way doesn't work, but it never worked for me. B e. Brown says, can't paint, but been practicing with my pinstripe brushes, King 13 and Excalibur brushes. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we'll be practicing our brush skills this weekend, right? Am I? Yeah, you are. <laughs> I guess we are. We are. Ashley's going to take the class too. I am. And I'm going to be better than you. Yeah, I believe it. I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe it though. <laughs> I hope you do too. <laughs> okay. So we got blue on there. Easy enough. So at this stage, there's a couple of different things we can do. I can add the gold over the top and it's going to tint everything to a green because they're transparent colors. One's not actually covering the other. It's like uh, um, they're transparent. We could also pull the tape lines and uh, add the gold, and then the gold would also be on the tape lines as well. So we the, the question here is, do we want our pinstripes to be silver or do we want our pinstripes to be gold? And that would determine whether or not we pull the stripes off now 
or later. So we're going to go ahead and pull them off now because I think we'll go ahead and go with the gold pinstripes. I like that idea. Let me go ahead and make sure I hit this dark enough. enough on this edge right here, though. Once we pull those, we don't really want to have to put them back on. Uh, a couple people are saying that pea grit sandpaper is just, it's like, it's a UK product, but it it means partial size in microns, but it's pretty much the same thing. Okay. Yeah, thanks for checking on that. Someone said, how long will that take to dry? This right here? Oh, it's pretty much already dry. Uh, when you're working with small instruments like this, spraying small amounts of material, um, it dries fast. Unless, unless it's a two-part clear coat or primer, those take time. You know, it doesn't matter how, even though you do spray them slower and thinner, they will dry faster. Pretty much anything you spray slower and more coats is going to dry much, much faster and um, you will have better adhesion properties. I kind of flooded it out a little bit right here. So I want to wait just another second there. Uh, somebody said, I've got a question about how to keep um, gas from lifting up my paint. They said they used a 2K clear from a spray can, uh -huh. but it leaked out and ruined the paint. Oh, man. What can I do to prevent that? Hmm. Well. Somebody told us, someone said, th th we were talking to another painter that said they JB welded or something. They yeah, JB that. weld. Yeah. I've never been a fan of that, though. And I don't think his customers are fans of that either. Oh. Because <laughs> I think he didn't mention that, right? I don't know. His I didn't customers hear like, what the hell is this? Oh, it's JB Weld. I didn't hear that part. <laughs> I've never been a fan of JB Weld for anything. I don't think I've ever got anything to work with JB Weld. Oh, okay. Don't listen to me. But uh, there is a, something else called Lip Seal. I don't know if it's still around. Lift or lip? Lip. Lip Seal. And it's meant to brush around the, the edge of that. But to be honest, I never have any problems. As long as you're taping it out good. The tanks that do have the problems are um because because harley's now they have a like around the fuel bung they have like a lip so as long as you're taping up around that lip you're going to be fine you're not the gas is really not going to get up over that but the flush mount caps are a pain in the ass if you're dealing with a flush mount cap for a customer relay the message to them that there is a chance that the paint could peel from that area if they're not careful and let them let them be responsible for that. You know, that's, I always do that. Like if it's the same thing with fiberglass parts, if you're, if you're painting fiberglass parts, you need to let the customer know that, hey, if this has hairline cracks in it, my paint's not going to hold that together and it's going to crack the paint with it. So I've had customers bring me back fiberglass parts and I'm like, I'm trying to figure out where this is my problem. <laughs> you know, I fixed the paint for them, but it's like, dude, this is just going to happen again all over. My opinion, I don't think fiberglass parts belong on a Harley. But, uh, maybe if they're done right. I don't know. Um, what are some pros and cons to pinstriping with oil base versus urethane? Um, well, the oil based is is harder to clear coat over. You gotta be really careful. Um, really thin coats to start out, or you could have a reaction there. Um, and I haven't played with the other pinstriping uh, paint, so I really don't know. I might be able to answer that question after this weekend, though. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we should bring that up. Come back with an answer, huh? Yeah. I know we're going to be using one shot there this weekend. And we say this weekend because there, we do have a class. Uh, Mr. Oz is coming in from out of town, and he is teaching a pinstriping class this Saturday. So I'll be taking the class. Ashley will be taking the class. And we got a few other guys here taking the class as well. I think there's a total of like 10 of us or something in total. I think Ryan's going to take it too. Nice. Oh, so yeah. Mateo says, I did a lace paint job on my truck a little over a month ago, and I never got around to sanding and polishing the clear coat. What do you recommend I do now to sand and polish it? Um, After a month old. A month old, you still probably, well, you know, that, that clear is pretty hard. Um, it's going to be, it won't be that hard to sand, but it's going to be a little bit harder to polish because that clear coat got so hard. Uh, not saying it can't be done, um, but I would get on it sooner, sooner than later. And maybe you don't need to do the whole thing too. How did it lay out? That'd be the other question. Uh, I know a lot of, a lot of shops will just nip sand and 
when it's big surfaces like that, nib sand and let them go. But it's all up to what you're wanting to do on that. Nate said, we should all buy these air fresheners and send pics to Adam and Ashley to show them what we have learned. Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be fun. We'll see if we can make something like that happen. That sounds good. I think more of my idea would be like, um, I would probably send you a couple of them and then just send one, the one that you want to be judged back. And then uh, we could figure out. figure out what, how, to, how to make that work. Okay, let's go ahead and go with the, the gold candy. Can you use watercolor and solvent-based paint together on the same paint job? Yes, you can. Yeah, you just gotta make sure the both of them are dry before you lay the other one on top. Keep in mind with water-based paints though, that you get rid of the opportunity to be able to clean your part with glass cleaner. Because a lot of times what will happen is like overspray or like dust will, um, paint dust will get everywhere. I think it was last week we had a big problem. Wasn't it? What did I paint? Oh, the uh, cooler that was doing that to me bad. So I had to keep on going back and um, spraying glass cleaner on that to clean it up. And the reason why I was doing that is because it's a plastic part and it had a lot of uh, static. static charge to it. That's when you use a bounce sheet. When you use a, you figure that out, huh? Yeah, because I use it when my hair is staticky. I use them in my hair. It takes the static away from my hair, so it's got Brilliant. To work parts, right? But yes, that does work. Isaac sent a twenty dollars super chat and said, "Dropping gems tonight." Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, appreciate the support, guys. All right, so you see how that just turned that green? Simple as that. Like, wow, isn't that amazing? A little more right here because it's blue in the center. Nate says, I know next year I'll be making these for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a good or idea. Or birthdays. Or anything. I mean, this is a cool thing to have. All right, there's that side. I'm going to go ahead and put the lime in there. I have this, I have this little stencil I cut out with the Cricut cutter. Uh, let's see if I can put this in the center. Are we going to be uh, streaming the pinstripe class or going live on it? Uh, we might go live for a minute or two. Yeah. We do have a photographer video guy coming down too. So I might be able to pull some stuff off of that. I'm trying to get this thing in the center and it's, I can't see. Okay, here we go. I've been told if you mix a little of the hardener from your clear in the one shot, it will help with reactions when you clear. Oh, really? That People said, don't get you started on fiberglass. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you don't like to talk about that. <laughs> Let's talk about fiberglass. <laughs> fiberglass is terrible all around, though. Like, even working with it, let alone painting it. Speaking of it, do you need anything extra like adhesion promoter <laughs> when you're painting it? Yeah, I'll do adhesion promoter. <laughs> you know, it sticks pretty good, actually. Um, it's the, uh, you know, the paint's not going to stop the fender from cracking. It's not going to hold it or glue it together. So if you're doing a job like that, just be up front with the customer. Say, hey, look, this is what you're working with. Well, this is what I'm working with. And this is what might happen. And by not being transparent with the customer like that, it could come up. You could have a lot of problems. Is there a company that makes masking tape half the width of what you're using? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, three quarter inch. That's an inch and a half, so three quarters would be half that. Lost soul, so we could buy the trees, paint them, then send them back to be auctioned off for a good cause for charity. Oh, that's a great idea. That is a great idea. All right, where's my purple? For my uh, black. Yeah. What are you looking Oh, it's about? right there. The black. Is the class this Saturday? When is the class? The class is this Saturday. Yep. Two days. Not tomorrow. The next day. There's still a couple spots open if you're interested, but it is in, here in Utah. Okay, let's put some black candy
It'll be super light with this. You should make some motorcycle cutouts like that. Motorcycle cutouts? Oh, yeah. Like a tank or a whole motorcycle? I am actually doing tanks. It's not going to be like the last ones we did. It's going to be more like a wassail style tank rather than a sportster shape. But yeah, you guys have any ideas of stuff that you want cut? Uh, I'm looking for ideas, actually. So, yeah, the next will be I'm going to do... Um, so we have the trees, we have the hoods. I'm going to do a wassail shaped uh, motorcycle tank. And then I'm also going to do like a Simpson style outline helmet tank or helmet uh, panel. They said, yes, the whole motorcycle. The whole motorcycle. Yeah. I mean, it can happen. I'm going to spray one more coat on this. Do you have an idea of time frame if you live stream during the class? What time you'll do that? Uh, it's going to be a hit and miss on that because I'm taking the class too. So, uh, yeah, probably around lunchtime, I would say. How do you clean your airbrush so fast? I just have a little bottle of lacquer thinner that I just squirt into it and I flush it out. Also, if you put lacquer thinner in a spray gun, or uh, not a spray gun, in a, a pump spray bottle, that works great too. So, you can see I... No problems there. I had the tape on that. Once again, nothing was really oversaturated. I didn't over it right here. I kind of did. Uh, you can see right here, I did spray a lot more than I wanted to. Actually, right here, too. Those two areas. It's kind of natural, those areas that are easy to get to. You're going to pound a little more paint into those areas. So just keep that in mind. John said, You're going to cause me to spend more money. Someone said an HD logo. HD logo. I feel like I'd be bending the rules a little bit on that one. <laughs> does the class start at 10? Uh, I think it does start at 10. Yes, 10 to 6. Yep, and we'll be there. Feel free to. Even if you're not taking the class, you can drop by. Let's see what we're doing. Okay. Usually when I do these, I don't. I don't. I usually would lay down the letters. Shadow. I would usually lay down the letters and then um, have that to be uh, like I would have that gold. But when I printed this, I had a hard time actually keeping the letters. They all got jacked up because it's so small. Uh, so I went with the neg the positive on that. So there it is. Nothing too crazy. Should we do the other side real quick? Yeah. Okay. That was pretty fast. I did burn through this area right here when I was sanding. Burnt through a little bit right there. But I'm going to go ahead and just edge this in black once it's done. So let's grab some. They said a heart, uh, motorcycle would be cool if you didn't do it too big so they could paint the whole thing. Hmm. Let's see. We have uh, eighth inch tape here. Oh, that's 16th. Are you still selling the Limeline binder on Amazon? I can't find it. It should be on there. You see, you see any problems with that? I haven't looked. Look it up on your phone. Make sure it's still on there. What are you using to print the letters? Uh, use a Cricut cutter. A Cricut cutter three to be exact. Maker, Cricut maker three. All right, I'll start right here because that seems like a pretty easy point to be able to get a horizontal line started. Bob Ross would be so happy. <laughs> Making them proud. I'm gonna so I'm gonna go ahead and do a serape style since I have all these paint colors mixed up already. Um, well, we'll do another serape style on this, but I'm gonna do it a little bit different. The last ones I did, um, they just faded like gradually uh, faded to a lighter color. I saw some other people do the Serape blanket and what they'll do is they'll throw a bright, the same color, they'll throw another bright one in between it. And I feel like I like that better than the way I was doing it. So there's no shame in that, you know? So you don't, I mean, it looks good, but I feel like these guys, I liked it better, so. I think that the paint still, the clear base is still on there. Yeah. 
Yeah, clear base cut. Uh, yeah, that's on there. Yeah, so it shouldn't be any problem with that. It's uh, clear base coat. My mind, clear base coat. You should be able to find it on Amazon. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Bob Ross would be so happy. Did I say that? Yeah. Happy little <laughs> okay. tree. I like Bob Ross. I'll hear it twice. Happy little trees. Got all my lease supplies for the variegated copper. Uh, can't wait to try them, but I have a question. I was painting my car door and got a sag and run in my pearl. What can I do? Oh, and the pearl? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, usually when you when you run a, a pigment or a candy or something like that, um, yeah, hopefully it's not too bad to where you can live with it. If not, you might need to re repaint that section and blend it in where it sags. Hot rod truck and car cutouts. Hot rod truck and car. That would be cool, like a C10. Simpson mod bandit helmet. Yes, I'm definitely doing a Simpson mod helmet. I don't know if it's the mod one. It's like whatever shape is on the box. Like, you know, if you buy a Simpson helmet, like on the side of the box, it shows like an outline. Do something like that. Should have painted Tommy Boy's face on that tree. Whose face? Tommy Boy. <laughs> I could probably paint one of his eyeballs and half of his nose. This thing's pretty small. C10 and an Impala. What would the process be for painting Harley wheels that are painted and alloy? Would you strip the painted areas or just sand the whole wheel, prime, and paint? I would sand the whole wheel. I wouldn't strip it. You depending on what you're sanding, you might not have a need to prime it. Chad Newman said, I can cut those hot rod cutouts for you. I already have a 70s C10 designed. Oh, really? Sure. Yeah, we just barely found somebody to local that cuts our stuff for us now. It's been a while because we've been out of stock on those hoods. We had somebody else doing them in Colorado. Arizona. No, it was Colorado. Oh, I thought that was Arizona. Uh, when's the bigger candy coming? Um, I just ordered it, so it's getting made right now. Get loaded up on a truck. So yeah, the, the candies are going to come in the pint size, full pint. So they're going to last a long time. Um, we're also getting coarse silver base coat. And we're also getting white base coats. And we're also getting pint sizes of each of the primary colors in pigment. So basically red, blue, and yellow again. But instead of them being in candy, they're going to be in just a pigmented form. Just a regular candy or a regular paint. So that way you can do the same thing. You need the green. You mix those the yellow and the blue together to get the green. Um, however, like you saw on this one how we were able to... We didn't have to mix them together. We just had to spray one on top of the other. With pigments, that wouldn't be possible because they're not transparent. Someone said a coffin door would be a cool cutout. Oh, An yeah. alien head would be fun to paint. Simpson Ghost Bandit is in the box. I got a couple of runs in my base coat. How can I fix it before laying 2K clear? Mm, you have runs in your base coat, huh? So you, you definitely applied that uh, way too thick. So understand that base coat can be applied pretty much as light as you want it to be. Um, and you can put as many coats as fast or, you know, you, you, wanna do, you don't want to go too fast because if you're sagging base coat, that means you're applying way too much, way too fast. Um, try slowing down the gun. Try doing uh, lighter coats to start. Build it up slowly. Because really with base with base coats, you're not trying to get it to like wet and level out, you know. You're all you're trying to do is get the paint onto the part. So, you know, even if you have to do five to six coats, do light coats. And then um, with the clear coat, obviously you have to treat that differently. When you go to clear coat something, um, I kind of do the same principles. Light coats to start, attack coat to start, and then uh, maybe a medium coat on the second one, and then I'll hit another two that are pretty heavy. Uh, but make sure you're waiting for your dry times 
And um, but as far as fixing that now with the base coat, you should be able to sand that out and then rebase coat that area before you clear it. So it's not the end of the world on that one. Okay. Let's, uh, what do we got here already? I already got the, I'm going to have to mix up some colors now. Do you sell four ounce ready to spray? Uh, four ounce, n no, nothing ready to spray. No. An island like this would be cool. You know, the island emoji con that has like a palm tree and then like sand, a pile of sand under it. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. Eight by 10, though. Can you metal leaf a wheel? A uh, metal leaf a wheel. Yes. You're, I mean, obviously, you're going to have to sand it really good. So remember, if you're throwing, if you're blowing flake into like little crevices, you're going to have to get in there with some sandpaper to be able to smooth that out. And that might be a little difficult. Marvin Heemeyer, Haymeyer, making the hoods in his muffler shop. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> I don't know. Marvin Heemeyer, Haymeyer, making the hoods in his muffler shop. Muffler shop. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means either. I wasn't sure. We're going to take some. Well, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll make the orange right here. There we go. That makes a nice orange compared to the red that we had before. So let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and start with red right here, huh? Okay. Just a second, we'll dry it off. Okay, that's a pretty deep red right there. So we'll go ahead and pull the next two. Don't forget, we gotta give away something. Oh yeah, we do. We'll wait till the end. We'll give away something and we'll give away this tree too, so. Okay, I'm gonna spray a lighter coat on that so you can see that you can still see the middle line is still there uh, because I did spray a little bit more candy on that. Remember that red candy is the, the most prominent color of all the candies. So when you go to spray those, they're going to cover faster and they're, um, you know, you'll have spray them on top of like, or next to black, you're going to have less contrast. Good luck with the leafing oh, tomorrow, man. Swampy. With leafing tomorrow? He said, I got all my leafing supplies. Going to give it a try tomorrow. Oh, yeah. All right. Excited for you. Yeah, try double leafing it. it turns out perfect almost every time. How do you prep candy paint for an airbrush? How do you prep it? How do yeah. you, uh, so you're going to mix it uh, 60 to 60 percent. 60 clear base coat, 40% uh, candy, and then you're going to reduce it roughly one to one. So I'm going to do a darker one again right here because when I saw those guys do it, it looked better when they kind of put a, put a darker line in with the other ones. I just, like I said before, I just faded them out both ways. I'm going to try something a little different. What we'll do here is we can go ahead and pull this and we can pull this. Larry says, this might be a strange question, but can I paint concrete like a flower pot? Um, if the paint will stick to it, yes. It's pretty porous, so yeah. I don't know. Didn't you paint... Uh didn't you paint uh, a brick wall? No. Oh. At that tattoo shop? What was that? Was that just a regular wall? Yeah. Oh. That was a regular wall. Not brick. No. I was on 25th or whatever, so I figured it was brick. No, it was, uh, it was just a regular plastered wall. He meant, can you spray it this 
Oh, he said spell check. Sorry, I can't spell. This way. Can he paint it this way that you're doing? The concrete? Can you what? What was that? It says spell check. It, he can't spell, right? He oh. said, or spell automatic. Auto correct, whatever the heck it's called. I can't get my words out. He's just wondering if he could spray like this stuff on the pot. Hmm. You have to try it because I have never have. So that's a good question. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to break off of this with uh, let's do actually. God, I couldn't speak for a minute. Uh, let's I go was ahead. I <laughs> Yeah, I saw you. I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm not me no more, huh? <laughs> I don't know. What would cause my base coat to look like it froze? It formed lines that looked like a frozen window. Whoa. A base coat looked like that, huh? Huh. Uh, yeah, it's most likely contaminants, I guess. Is that what you're seeing this, this happen? I'd have to look at it, really. Swampy just sent a $10 super chat. Oh, yeah, right on, Swampy. Thank you. Thanks, Swampy. All right, what am I making next? Oh, let's go with some purple. So if we have the red, and we go ahead and... Someone said, uh-oh, she's getting water drunk. <laughs> oh, we got some blue? Can't speak. We'll mix those two together and make sure we have the right combo. He says oh, yeah. he wishes he could share. He says he wishes wishes he could share the picture here. Oh uh, yeah. You can't though, huh? No, you can't. You'd have to come online with us. He wants to show you how it's fro like it's frozen window. Oh really? Hmm. Somehow you can do it by. Uh, you go into invite right there. Yeah, if he's willing to do it, if he's willing to do it, then. Uh, all you have to do is just uh, type in a code and go to this website. So, yeah, let us know. You just got to go to StreamYard.com, type in a code, and then we can be able to um, to put you on. Just make sure your phone's hooked to Wi-Fi. Adam, how about doing a skateboard or a snowboard? Oh, that's a great idea. I've done a skateboard. I think a uh, Serape style on that one, too. You can make a traditional lightning bolt out of that aluminum for them to paint. Oh, that's cool. That's a good idea. Okay, purple. Hopefully this turns out pretty good. I think it will. Okay, we want to make sure that... Well, once again, here's an orange that has gold in it. If we take this purple and any of that overspray goes into that, it's going to turn it brown. This purple already kind of looks like brown. There we go. Jeremy Diamond just sent a $10 super chat and said, thanks, Adam and Ashley. See you guys on Saturday. All right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, look forward to it. Well, excited. Do a purple one here that's kind of brighter. And then what we can do is fade. Hopefully this is not too wet to pull this tape. Yay, we got to 100 likes. Okay, right on. Let's give something away. And Swampy said, happy anniversary to me. Been a member for 12 months. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know what? That just means you're going to crush that uh, leaping tomorrow, Swampy. I think so. Have a factory painted Harley Davidson gas tank black. I want to put silver flake just on top of the tank with a black candy sunrise pattern. Do you recommend silver base coat or just sand the black, original black? Oh, you're going to need a silver base coat to do any of that and to use candies. So yeah, start with a silver base coat and then go from there. Uh, you can start with a metal flake base coat too. Okay, let's pull ahead and... What do you want to give away? Um, let's give away... Uh, let's give away a candy tri-pack. Since we're using them. So we'll give away the gold, the blue, and the red. 
candies that we've been using on this. And then we'll do another one because this is not going to be too much longer because I'm we're moving along pretty quick on this. And then after that, we'll go ahead and give this thing away. So the next guy or gal uh, can win this thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put one more of this purple right there. Very, 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 very faint. Okay. Ready for me to do it now? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, good luck, guys. Oh, I almost won that. <laughs> uh, but uh, Matthew C. beat me out. Good job, dude. Yeah, so all you got to do is shoot us an email, info at limelinepaintsupply.com, and let us know your address, and we'll get that shipped out to you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and... We should, maybe we do a brown right here. Let's do a brown. So let's take. We'll take. Uh, we have, we're done with the orange, so we'll go ahead and use the orange to make our brown. So this is a nice, vibrant orange, as you can see. And we used red and yellow to make that orange. So if we were to add the third primary color to that blue, which you don't need very much because this is pretty powerful. Maybe we'll just do a little bit, and you're gonna see. Well, it might actually be a green right now because there's more other colors. Yeah, so it's kind of a green. Let's put more blue. Okay, once again, that's pretty green. Let's go ahead and add some red. Here we go. We're getting better. That's still pretty green. Let's add some red. Because red's the only color that doesn't make green. So if it's green, we need to kill it off with that third color. If it was too purple, we would use yellow. If it was too orange, we would use blue. How much flake do you need one for more. two Harley stretch bag? Just two stretch bags? Just one, just one set of uh, one pack. One packet? Okay, here we go. Now we're getting into the shade we want. Now we're getting into that brown color. That looks great. Okay, let's do it. Take this. We'll clean it out. Looks like an eyedropper would be handy mixing these candy colors. Oh, oh yes, that would. Actually, that's how Gerald Mendez does it. He's a very very famous very very good airbrush artist and he has a little dropper that very very precise man when you're working on cars and motorcycles and trucks you're in a hurry probably i probably should have a dropper though go ahead and tape that up no overspray oh yeah that's the right color brown i like that We'll do another thick one right here on the bottom. We'll take the middle one out and we'll go ahead and go lighter on this one. That's good. Don't go too much because we want to keep those lines. Move that and we can move this one at the same time. And we'll just lightly. The nice thing is because when we're putting a coat over this one, we're also putting it over that. But we don't want to lose our line. There we go. That's just That's enough right there. Swampy said, did you all get a bunch of snow up there in Utah? Uh, we did get quite a bit. Yeah, we needed it, though. It was pretty dry so far this season. Yeah, that's a... Well, we did have one little snowstorm before that, but it usually always is really pretty bad, up, you know, even up until Christmas, but it didn't snow till after this time. Yeah. So it was weird. Everybody's wanting to get out and go skiing, so they're wondering what the heck. 
true story. Okay, we're gonna go with uh, so we already did purple, we did orange and red, we did brown. We haven't really done green, so let's grab another cup. If if you don't use all the color you just mix, is it worth saving it for later? Uh, yes, it is. Yep, you can put it in a little uh, tight soap bottle. Those paint saver cups that have a little ball in them. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That we sell. Those are good for that. Uh, what color did I say I was doing? Oh, green. Okay, so I need blue. Larry says we got 14 inches two days ago. 10 to 12 coming tomorrow. Wow. Wow, we don't got that. We got 11 in Maine and over three. 11 inches in Maine and then over three inches of rain. What a mess. Oh, boy. Yeah. All right, look at that green it made. Perfect. Dump the brown out. Larry says, I was on my motorcycle Christmas Day. It was 52. Yeah, people here were riding on oh, Christmas yeah. Eve, and that, which was so unusual. Yeah, there was a lot of people riding this winter. Do they need to retype hashtag Lime? No, you don't have to do that. Oh, wait, if our connection drops. Oh, yes, you probably should do that. It wouldn't hurt doing it twice anyway. We have 89 and a half up in Alaska. <laughs> wow. Josh says, I use plastic jello shot cups with lids to store, to store mine. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Some of those aren't solvent uh, resistance, though. I've tried to use some before and they ended up melting. Oh, making a hole? Yeah, it, like on some plastics, you just can't handle it. Ooh. Cheddar says, my wife says I only got three inches. <laughs> I like that. It's a guy's joke. You don't get it, Ash. I get it. What are you talking <laughs> about? I just didn't laugh because I figured it's probably true if his wife said it. <laughs> I'm not going to argue about that. <laughs> I, will, I believe the lady. <laughs> Josh said, oh, I guess I better go check my cups then. <laughs> out loud. <laughs> yeah, they're all melted through. He comes back. He's like, dang, you were right. It's all melted. Go ahead and pull this one. Another idea for a tin to paint in the number one, like the Harley tin sign. Oh, yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah, I feel like I can get a little bit of trouble for that, though. Maybe not the one. Okay, I'm going to saturate those pretty good right there. That way we have some contrast between the lines. Pull that one. Light coat. Pull this one. Light coat. And then I think we're going to have to put another one right here. There we go. Okay. Take that one off. We'll take this one off. So awesome, Larry says. And then once again, just dust it. So you don't lose the lines. Also, when you go to clear this, you need to be really careful not to oversaturate it at first. Because what will happen is these candies will shift and move around. A truck tailgate would be a cool cutout, too. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, okay. This one turned out pretty good. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and edge everything in. A, in a, well, what I wouldn't use a heart camera. cut out. What, what's that? A heart cut out. Heart cut out? That's what I said. For Valentine's Day? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take the, uh, I, feel, I feel like black candy might be okay there. Man, oh man, that's so awesome. I'm going to try my first Harley gas tank soon. Cool. Let's go ahead and we'll grab the black right here. Can black you candy. explain saturation, please? Saturation just means that you put too much paint on at once. And it causes it to take a really long time to dry because you've trapped all those solvents with all the paint that you put on. 
well, not you, I don't really know, but <laughs> me sometimes and anybody that just, you know, you just got to be careful and not spraying too much down at once. You know, don't get too crazy with it. Allow it to dry and then, and then put on more. All right. I'm just going to go around the edges of this with a black candy and fade in a little bit into the center of the tree. It's going to cover that little burn through we have. And it'll give it a cool kind of a blended seamless look. A skull cut out. What about letter cutouts? What about what? A letter? skull, a clover for St. Patrick's Day. Oh, that's cool. And letters. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's looking great. I love that black fade on there. Did you see the message I sent? Did Adam see the message I sent him in Instagram about doing a live about painting floating letters? Uh -uh. Huh. Message on his Instagram. Okay, I'll check that out. If, if it's on the time warp one, I guess. Add some air freshener to the clear coat so it can smell good yeah, in the no, car. Uh, put a little bit of Tommy Hill figure on there. Look how dirty my hand is. Good God. <laughs> How about... I really wish that would have been left silver. I should have did that the opposite, but it's okay. How about painting a 64 RC hopper? Oh, that sounds cool. All right, let's give this thing away. So this will need clear coat, and then um, whoever wins this, give me until uh, early next week, and we'll get it shipped out, most likely on Tuesday or Wednesday. But, uh, yeah, let's give this thing away. Looks like you slapped a smurf. Working man hands. <laughs> Pretty bad. Maybe cut out all the states and paint each state the flag colors with candy and flake, then put them together to make a map of the U.S. Oh, that's cool. A diamond would be cool cut out, too. All right, guys, let's give this thing away. Uh, hashtag live in the comments. Everyone's still typing, so I'll give them a couple okay, give seconds. Okay, a couple seconds. Yeah, when you buy these two, it also come with the the black elastic strings, so you can hang it up too. Okay, looks like a slow down. So here we go. All right, good luck, guys. You. <laughs> I knew it. Not All right. happening. Uh, we're going to do it again. What the? Who is that guy? Who is that guy? <laughs> All right. Let's try this again. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Rigged. <laughs> now you have to give away two prizes. I think that happens because when I type in uh, in the comments, type in hashtag line, it automatically puts me in. Yeah, it does. Larry Maples. We know Larry. Well, we don't know Larry, but we know that name. Yeah, he doesn't get a good on, come on often. Now he does. And now he does. One, and he wins. He's the one that had some trouble and his daughter saved him, remember? Oh, yeah. So cool. Huh, awesome. And he sent a super chat. Oh, well, that's why he won. He's rigged. <laughs> All you got to do is super chat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. All right. Let's give him one last look at this thing. And any more questions, go ahead and type them in real quick. Uh, but other than that, we will see some of you next Saturday. This Saturday. What do you want me to do? Unless Sorry. Unless you see you next Thursday. Yeah, any other questions real quick and then we'll we'll head out of here. He said no flipping way. He all right. 
Yeah, you want it, dude? I'll give you a little plastic uh, band for this as well. Do you have a fan nearby for the fumes? Uh, yeah, we do have a fan in the back. It kind of pushes it out. He said, Straight. no way. Thank you very much. Have fun at the paint class. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited for the paint class. All right, cool. My paint still has a sticky feel. Any way to fix that? Huh, that's weird. Is it base coat or is it been cleared? Usually if it has a sticky feel and it's been clear coated, you may have um, either forgot to put the hardener in it or you may have not put enough hardener in it. Fun fact, not fun, but if you <laughs> add too much, <laughs> if you add too much hardener into your clear, it's going to shrink and crack. So if you ever have like a uh, clear coat that like stretches and it cracks, that's usually caused, caused by uh, too much hardener. And then not enough hardener would be, it would be left gummy, not dry all the way. Once, Once you're at that point, you do have to get that off. It, it kinda, you can't really coat on top of that. That's not a good idea. Cause you're gonna, that, that clear coat that's not hard and it's gonna just flex all over the place. How cold is too cold the clear coat? Uh, under 60 degrees would be way too cold. 70 is optimal, 65 is still okay. But like when you get into 64, 63, you can, you can make it happen. Just remember, you're going to have to extend your dry times and you're going to have to spray a little bit slower. Dave M sent a $20 super chat and said, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for all the super chats today, guys. Super Bowl trophy cut out the week of the game. Whoa, that's a cool idea. You got to sign it now. <laughs> well, there's not enough room on here to sign it, really. He said that the sticky paint is the base coat, he said. Huh. Yeah, interesting. Maybe you're all right. And it's, uh, yeah. Did you accidentally buy single stage paint? Maybe by accident and it needs, it needs hardener. Usually base coat is, um, is okay. Usually that doesn't happen, but or maybe, maybe you applied too much. I don't know if you want to, if you want to hit me up on Instagram, I can help you more with that to see if, but it sounds like there's other issues than, yeah. I don't think it's an application error. It sounds like a mixing error, but maybe it's the wrong. I don't know. But yeah, just let me know and I can help you out. Uh, someone said, how much for the trees? Well, the trees are going to be for sale uh, they're as a three pack and they're aluminum. Um, they're going to be listed at around like 24 bucks for a pair of three or a pair of three. Yeah. What no. is that? What do you call that? Three, a pack of three. Yep. Okay. Pack of three. <laughs> making the listing right now. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be, uh, they're going to be on sale. So you're going to get them around 20 bucks for three of them when they first come out. Larry FYI, said, FYI, if, if there's new products from Liveline coming out, there's a good chance they're on sale almost always when they first come out. That'd be the time to buy. Larry said, did I miss hoodies? Oh yes. yeah. Yep. We do have hoodies. We still need to get those on. We have hoodies and t-shirts now, Larry. You yes, missed we do. it. Yes, we do. But we do have them. We you're just need to put them on. To, yeah, you're supposed to put them on today. Love the channel. I'm about to, to do a skateboard with some of your techniques. Awesome. Skateboards are easy and fun to do. They have a lot more surface area than, than something like this. Fastest Thursday in a while. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think we're in under an hour, right? Oh, no. Hour 15. Do a cutout of your logo like you send your stickers out. Oh, that's a good idea. Huh. The Limeline logo would probably work. I don't we could I don't think we'd be able to make the, the time warp one work. Yeah, Larry, he'll get those hoodies and the t shirts put up. Uh he was supposed to do it, but he wasn't he actually isn't feeling very good today. So No, I feel like crap today. Uh -huh. I'm on the I'm on the other side of it though. But he'll get the pictures and then get them up and then hoodies come in. Hoodies and the t-shirts come in large and go up to a 3XL. So we'll have those up soon too. Yep. All right, guys. All right, well, guys. Thanks. Well, and maybe we'll see you for a little bit on Saturday when we go live for a little bit. And then uh, next Thursday for sure. 
Uh, we are going out of town. How many are we going to miss? How many lives are we going to miss? Two? I was just going to look at that. Yeah, we will be on the next Thursday, but not the 25th. And not my birthday, February oh. 1st. But we will be on the 8th. Yep, we'll be back on the 8th. All right, guys. Thank you very, 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 very much. Good night, guys. Have a good weekend. See ya.